I'm going to talk to you about hopefully clearing up for those of you in the room and if you could pass it along to friends what is the difference between physical therapy and occupational therapy and what in the world is speech therapy going to do for me in the event of um, a medical event um, as we age you're going to be hopefully prescribed therapy um, in one fashion or another and I'm going to talk to you about the exact definitions and the scopes of practice and the areas you may uh, see a therapist and then um, give a little case scenario. Uh, so we'll start with physical therapy and the definition um, of physical therapy is a primary care specialist that uses mechanical force <coughs> that uses mechanical force and movements, manual therapy, exercise therapy, electrotherapy, and various physical therapies through evidence-based treatments, remediates impairments, and promotes mobility, function, and quality of life through examination, diagnosis, prognosis, a physical intervention, and physical intervention. Wow. That's a lot. Um, the American Physical Therapy Association defines a physical therapist as a highly educated individual who can help patients reduce pain and improve or restore mobility. That's a lot for us to, to kind of take in. Um, physical therapy scope of practice. What, what kinds of things do they do? Um, cardiovascular and pulmonary physio physiotherapy, clinical electrophysiology, geriatrics, uh, integum uh, skin and wound care, uh, neurological, orthopedic, pediatric, sports, community physiotherapy, women's health, palliative care, back pain treatment. So they cover a wide variety of um, illnesses and things out there. Um, where would you find a physical therapist? Uh, you'd find them at hospitals, acute rehab centers, long-term care settings, uh, subacute rehab centers, skilled nursing facilities, outpatient clinics, community home settings, uh, and schools. So that is the the quote on the definition formal definition of physical therapy. So let's move on to occupational therapy. The use of assessment and intervention to develop, recover, or maintain the meaningful activities or occupations of individuals, groups, or communities. The American Occupational Therapy Association defines OT as helping people across the lifespan participate in the things they want and need to do through the therapeutic use of everyday activities, in parentheses, occupations. The scope of practice for occupational therapy would include children and youth, health and wellness, productive aging, adult rehabilitation, travel occupational therapy, community, pediatric, work and in industry, and palliative care. You would find occupational therapists in hospitals, acute rehab centers, long-term care settings or uh, skilled nursing facilities, outpatient clinics, community, the home setting, or, and schools. And that's the formal definition of occupational therapy and things that they cover. Now we're going to move on to speech <coughs> language therapy is a field of expertise practiced by a clinician known as a speech language pathologist who specializes in the evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment of communication disorders, cognitive communication disorders, voice disorders, and swallowing disorders. So they cover a lot of uh, areas uh, the scope of practice for a speech therapist is cognitive aspects of communication, speech, language, swallowing disorders, voice, sensory awareness related to communication, causes for services. 
uh, strokes, brain injury, hearing loss, developmental delay, a cleft palate, cerebral palsy, emotional issues. Those are just a few. And you would find speech therapists in hospitals, acute rehab centers, long-term care setting or the skilled nursing facility, outpatient clinics, community, and schools. Okay, those are the formal definitions of all of the different therapies. Now, that's a lot for us to take in. In layman's terms, I'm going to give everyone a case sample. Um, and so we're going to start with John Doe, for example, was admitted to Autumn Lake Healthcare at Chestertown from the hospital for rehabilitation after, after he suffered a stroke. So we're going to use stroke as an example. He presents with left-sided weakness, poor sitting balance, unable to walk or transfer, inability to perform his bathing, dressing, or toileting tasks, coughing and choking during meals, and having word difficulty, word finding difficulties. John Doe will be evaluated by the occupational therapist, the physical therapist, and the speech therapist. Example plan of care established by each therapy discipline is as follows. So what would happen to you if you, for example, if you came into a skilled nursing facility such as Autumn Lake Healthcare, you had suffered a stroke, and you had these three therapy disciplines, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech therapy coming in to evaluate you to help you uh, get better after your stroke. Well, occupational therapy, <clears throat> when they do, when they complete your evaluation, they're going to be looking for things um, and establishing a plan of care to help with neuromuscular re-education, coordination, and strengthening of the arm. So this gentleman had, um, I believe it was a right-sided weakness, <clears throat> left-sided weakness. So the left side is he, sometimes they're completely paralyzed, they can't move at all, or they have a little bit of movement. The occupational therapist is going to take the arm and, I, and, um, and through east electrical stimulation sometimes, exercises, uh, proprioception techniques, uh, so we can get the brain and the arm talking to one another again. Uh, fine motor and gross motor coordination tasks. We're going to try and help the, the arm come back to its functional use. Um, another thing the occupational therapist is probably going to address is going to be the balance retraining uh, for his core because he had the left side of weakness and he's probably leaning um, and we're not able to sit up on his own. Another we're going we're gonna to look at transfer training so we can move from one surface to another. An ADL retraining, activities of daily living retraining, including hemi techniques, meaning using just one arm while the other arm is still in recovery, and or adaptive equipment training. A lot of occupational therapists will issue adaptive equipment such as reachers, sock aids, dressing sticks, uh, some of the uh, less obvious are button hooks, uh, elastic shoelaces. Um, all of these things can um, help an individual um, perform the activities of daily living a little bit easier. Um, and occupational therapy is going to always increase the independence of, of all the activities of daily living. So that would include the bathing, the dressing, um, cooking, cleaning, um, hobbies of choice, um, getting, moving around, but it's always going to be to increase your independence. Now the physical therapist is going to come in and evaluate John Doe as well, and they're going to be looking at the neuromuscular re-education, coordination, and strengthening of his left leg. Um, and that would entail probably some electrical stimulation, wake up those muscles a little bit, exercises, and proprioception techniques as well. Get the brain talking to the leg again. Uh, balance retraining. 
Um, they'll look at standing balance, uh, sitting balance as well um, to restore the, the mobility. Uh, and gait training, um, teaching Mr. Doe how to walk again um, and get those um, that mobility moving. Now the speech therapist's turn is going to come in and evaluate uh, Mr. John. And they're going to look at the neuromuscular re-education, coordination, and strengthening of his oral, <coughs> oral and pharyngeal function through, and you're probably, you're going to have them do silly exercises, moving his lips and tongue and uh, all around to get, to wake up the uh, oral motor, the function again. Um, and also to increase um, the verbal communication. Um, and the speech therapist is going to be looking at to enhance the patient's ability to safely eat and drink on the least restrictive diet. A lot of patients, if they come in, Mr. Doe's probably on thickened liquids, pureed diet, um, and we're going to want to enhance him back to uh, a regular diet. And, make, and we want to make sure that he can make his, make his wants and needs known. Um, so they're going to increase the verbal communication as well. So in conclusion, the, the speech, the occupational therapist, the physical therapist, and the speech therapist often work together as a team. A lot of times there could be an occupational therapist and a physical therapist working with you at the same time, but they're working on different functional outcomes. Their work, they could be doing similar activities with you, but their, their reasoning and their outcomes are different. Um, how many of people here have had therapy? Oh, okay, quite a few. Was, uh, did anyone ever question what was the purpose of the activities that they were being instructed to do? Yeah, sometimes it, with occupational therapy, it's, I'm retired. I don't need to learn to work. <laughs> Speech therapy is, I can talk. I don't need you. Some of the ones with physical therapy is, I can already walk. Why are you bothering me? So we hear it all. And uh, it's, it's definitely, and we're constantly educating um, the differences um, between all three disciplines and how, the, how they can help.